This is the Hasidic Story Project with Barack Holman, podcasting from Jerusalem, Israel. This podcast is sponsored by listeners just like you. To become a supporter of this podcast, please go to HasidicStory.com. H-A-S-I-D-I-C Story.com. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll It was the first night of Slichot by the Helege Rav Shalom of Bells, the Bells of Rebbe. And all of the Hasidim were waiting for the Rebbe to show up, but the Rebbe wasn't coming. Half an hour passes, 45 minutes. Almost an hour passes, and the Rebbe shows up. The Hasidim part the way for the Rebbe to reach the front of the shul, and the Rebbe begins the davening. And at some point in the middle of Slichot, the back door of the shul opens, and in comes this old Hasid, sits down on a back bench. Zelig is his name. And when the davening is over, the Rebbe goes and speaks to his Gabai, and then goes to his room. And the Gabai comes over to Zelig and says to him, Reb Zelig, the Rebbe would like to see you. Zelig says to the Gabai, what do you mean the Rebbe wants to see me? There's a thousand Hasidim here. Why would the Rebbe want anything to do with me? And the Gabai says, it doesn't matter. The Rebbe wants to see you. Come, let's go. So, Zelig, he goes with the Gabai into the Belzer Rebbe's room, and the Rebbe says to him, No, Zelig, sit down. Zelig doesn't want to sit down, because he's standing in the presence of the Rebbe. So the Rebbe sits down, and then Zelig sits down. Zelig waits for the Rebbe to speak, and the Rebbe says, Tell me, Reb Zelig, what were you doing before Slichot? And Zelig says to the Rebbe, I don't understand the question. The Rebbe said, Tell me, why were you late for Slichot? And Zelig, who was surprised, he said, The Rebbe noticed that I was late for Slichot? The Rebbe said, Yeah, the Rebbe notices many things. And then the Rebbe said to Zelig, No, why were you late for Slichot? And he said, Rebbe, I had some things to take care of. So now the Rebbe got more specific, and he said, Zelig, listen, just tell me, what was happening in your hut at the edge of town before Slichot? And Zelig is now shocked. His eyes are wide open. He says, Rebbe, how could you possibly know what I was doing in my house? The Rebbe has such holy vision. The Rebbe said, no, Zelig, my Gabba and I, we got in the wagon, and we rode out to the edge of town, and then we walked a little bit on the, the path to get to your little hut in the forest, and we watched what you were doing. And he said, what did the Rebbe see? And the Rebbe said, the Rebbe saw you pouring a cup of vodka for yourself, a cup of vodka for somebody else who wasn't there, and then you said a little something, you drank the vodka, you went around the other side of the table, you drank that vodka, then you sat back down, poured yourself another cup, poured the other empty cup, drank them both, stood up, and started dancing around the table. So tell me, Zelig, what was that all about? For sure the Rebbe has holy vision. If he knew to come to my house at that exact time when that was happening, the Rebbe waved him off. He said, doesn't matter what the Rebbe knows. What's important is what were you doing? Please explain it to me. So Zelig says, you know, Rebbe, my wife passed away many years ago. My children are all grown and they moved far away. And I'm left alone in this little hut in the forest. And what did I have? I had a little goat put out some milk. And with the milk, I could make a little bit of money. And I had some chickens that would lay eggs every now and then. And the eggs I could sell for some money. And that's how I got by. One day, the goat gets sick. I tried to nurse it back to health. But it was clear to me that this goat was not going to make it. So I said to Hashem, Listen, Hashem, I don't have very much left in this world. This goat means a heck of a lot to me. If you don't let this goat live, I'm going to stop putting on tefillin in the morning. And just like that, the goat died. And just like that, I stopped putting on tefillin. And then the chickens started to get sick. And I said, Hashem, seriously, you took away the goat. Now you're going to take away my chickens? That's all I have left. And one by one, the chickens started to die. And I said to Hashem, listen, if you kill off all my chickens, I'm not going to keep Shabbos anymore. That's it. You and I are finished. And just like that, the chickens died. And I stopped keeping Shabbos. And now we're getting closer to Slichot. And I'm not putting on tefillin anymore. And I'm not keeping Shabbos anymore. And I'm thinking, how could I ever forgive Hashem? How could I ever heal this relationship with the God that I'm so angry at? And then I remembered Shmuel the butcher. Shmuel and I, we had a real big argument. And we didn't talk with each other for months. And then one day Shmuel shows up at my house with a bottle of vodka. 
And he says to me, No, Zeleg, take out some glasses. We're saying Elachaim. I thought to myself, I'm going to say Elachaim with Shmirel, who's like my biggest enemy. He pours me a vodka. He pours himself a vodka. And then Shmirel says to me, Listen, Zeleg, we Jews, we have enough enemies. Let's not be enemies. Let's be friends. And then he lifts his cup and says, Elachaim. And I lifted mine and said, Elachaim. And then he said, You know what? Let's say another Elachaim. So we said another Elachaim together. And then we were feeling really good. And we started dancing together, and we hugged, and we forgot about all of the anger that we had between us. And we were able to make up. So here I'm thinking, okay, this is what I have to do for Hashem. I poured myself a glass of vodka. I poured a Shem of glass of vodka. And I said, Hashem, we Jews, we have enough enemies. Let's be friends. And I drank my glass of vodka. And I noticed that Hashem didn't drink his, so I drank it for him. Then I poured another glass of vodka for myself, and another one for Hashem. And since Hashem wasn't drinking his, I drank it for him. And then I started dancing around the table. And then I was ready for Shlichot, so I showed up to Shul and joined the minion. So the Belzer Rebbe says to Zelig, You should know, Reb Zelig, that it's in the merit of your tshuva, and your fixing your relationship with Hashem, that the prayers of everyone in this community were accepted. There was a terrible decree on this community, and all of my davening couldn't annul the decree. But your making up with Hashem did the trick and allowed all of our prayers, including the Rebbe's, to reach the highest places and change our fate for the better. This podcast is sponsored by listeners just like you. To become a supporter of this podcast, please go to HasidicStory.com. H-A-S-I-D-I-C-Story.com.